So I'm getting my truck packed up to go to the URI National Forest for a day full of off-roading. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to make a video highlighting the gear and equipment that I bring with me anytime I hit the trails. Especially if you're new to off-roading, it can cause a little anxiety thinking about you know, what will happen if you break something or if you break down and what type of tools and equipment do you need to be able to be prepared and take care of yourself in the event that you do need to make a repair. So first off, just starting off, I'm going to go into three main categories. One is going to be tools. Two is going to be replacement parts, and third is going to be equipment or gear, which is really kind of a subset of tools. But talking about tools, first, any vehicle, you've got to make sure that you have a tire iron and make sure that you have a jack so you can do a spare tire change. This, really, any vehicle should have this, but I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I've actually uh, been caught one time without my tire iron and lost lug nuts and lost a tire and a rim while I was driving down the street. So this is my main toolbox here. And really it's got a lot of basic stuff. This is really just a variety of different screwdrivers. This is a ratcheting screwdriver. It's got a long neck so you can kind of get into more recessed positions. And it's got a couple different nut driver bits and some Torx bits. I also have the stubby nut driver and ratcheting nut wrench. This is also good if you got to get into confined spaces. So these are really just extra tools that you know I used to have and I used to use just generally in my garage and then I upgrade them, get new stuff. And then these become tools that I just keep in my truck. Good things to have, just a variety of different types of screwdrivers and nut drivers. Basic sets of pliers. Again, these are pliers that say I had like 10 years ago and then I upgraded my garage set. And these become truck tires. And these become truck pliers. You just never know what general maintenance you're gonna need to do. I've got a variety pack of different Allen wrenches. Uh, specific for the 4x4 Nissan Xterras, you've got to make sure you got a 6mm Allen wrench. So I have one separately that I set aside for that that's uh, a socket that goes on a socket wrench. But make sure you have Allen wrench in case you need to do hub maintenance. Pretty generic, adjustable, crescent style wrench. Easy. More Allen wrenches, you got to have metric and SAE, you never know what you'll run into. This is always a good one. Battery's dead, so apparently that's not going to do very much for me now. Ah, there it goes. Headlamp, in case you're doing night wheeling or you end up having to make a repair at night by the time you get back to your vehicle. Good to have some source of light. Right. So the rest of these are just going to be impact sockets. I've got a Hitachi cordless impact. I keep it in my garage generally, but I'll just go ahead and pack it up for the trail. So I keep uh, generic sets of impact sockets just in case you need to make uh, a repair that you want to make it quick. So I've used these before when, uh, say, friends end up losing step rails at URI. This can uh, take the step rails off really quick so you're not sitting there for a half hour messing around with hand wrenches. This is actually a special socket, but this is for the wheel bearings. This is the axle nut on the 4x4 model, so if you got to take your 4x4 hub off, this has the special tongs that fit into the axle nut so you can replace wheel bearings. So I just always keep this in my truck just in case. Never had to use it on the trail, but you never know. I have used it a number of times for general maintenance, greasing bearings and things like that. Two little clamps. Don't think that I've ever actually used them, but uh, needed a space for them, so mobile toolbox is as good as any, right? So aside from the general screwdrivers and pliers and, and wrench type things, mini pry bar. This is always good if you got to do some type of steering or front end maintenance and you're trying to, you know, separate ball joints or things like that and you got to uh, you know, need a pry bar to try and hammer on something and break it loose. That's always a good thing to have. Three pound sledgehammer. This thing comes in handy all the time. I keep this in my garage, but whenever I go out to the trails, I make sure I bring it just in case. Now I've got this set of three wrenches. These are just random wrenches that I bought individually at a Menards back in the day. 21 millimeter, 7 eighths, and a 19 millimeter. Those are the sizes that are typically used on the front end for the tie rod ends and for like the, the upper ball joint nut. So if you ever have to do any type of suspension work, replace ball joints or replace a tie rod, these will come in handy. These are also good to use uh, if you got to break the nut free and you got a three pound sledgehammer that can make quick work of it. I also go ahead and keep a general grab bag of electrical stuff. So I've got maybe two feet of wire in there, some zip ties, various electrical connections, some heat shrink tubing, and electrical tape. So um, good to have that there. 
So this is my cobalt socket set. This used to be my main socket set that I use, but these are actually 12-point uh, sockets. They're generally good enough, though. Good ratchet wrench. This is, uh, you know, it'll get most of the work done. So this is now my truck set, since I got a nice Tecton set to replace it in the garage. And then I've got these two sets of generic open-end wrenches. Uh, I just showed you the three and the sizes that I most commonly use, but in case there's any other uh, unusual nuts and bolts beyond the suspension stuff, um, this is a pretty good set. It goes up to 17 millimeters or so and goes up to 5 eighths. So you can use these for tie rod adjusters, anything else that you happen to get to. I prefer to just have more tools than you know you think you might need. So I got a lot of redundancy in this kit. So you know there's some sizes I got more of. And the last thing that I got here is a nice little hatchet. I can't say that I've ever actually used this, but it was like seven bucks or something at Lowe's and I thought it looked cool. I was like, yeah, you never know if I gotta cut a tree branch down or whatever. And then I found out that like a foldable tree saw, like a tree limb saw, is actually much faster and better at cutting low hanging tree branches. So can't say I've ever really used this, but I have it nonetheless. So if you want to talk about actual spare parts on a first-gen Nissan Xterra, what are you most likely to break in an off-roading type situation? It's going to be anything that's on the front end. So steering system, tie rods, center links, ball joints being ripped up, and the hubs. So as far as spare parts, I have a spare, worn, manually locking hub. Um, I had spare automatic locking hubs too, the factory stock hubs as well. Uh, until I just upgraded to the worn. Once I got those worn manually locking hubs installed properly and everything torqued down right, they've been pretty much bomb proof, but it's good just to have. These are wheel bearings. These are greased in a Ziploc bag with some uh, heavy duty grease in them. Just in case, I've never had to make a bearing replacement on the trail. If you ever do off-roading frequently enough and you don't do greasing maintenance on your front wheel bearings, eventually, you know, if you go through water crossings and things, they will wash the grease out, you will explode your bearing, and then you'll be replacing all your bearings anyway so just in case also keep some cotter pins so if you have to replace anything on the suspension a lot of it is castle nuts that have these cotter pins you go through a drilled hole so have some extras in case you need to make a repair and you damage the pin and the absolute best spare parts to have and the most likely thing to break is going to be tie rods tie rod adjusters. These links right here that connect your center link out to your actual steering spindle. So I've got heavy duty ones from 4x4parts.com on my truck. They've been pretty good but I've still broken them before. And so I replaced them with heavy duty ones again and then I went ahead and got a spare set. Um, this is a generic eBay tie rod adjuster that I ended up getting donated to me when I was broke down on the trail with a tie rod. So actually, if you just compare the stock tie rod to the heavy-duty tie rods here, it is much thicker on the heavy-duty tie rods. So they do absolutely withstand a lot more abuse. So I've got a full set of heavy-duty ones, an eBay one, a stock one, plus the reverse thread nuts. And then this guy is something I'm particularly proud of. This was uh, after I broke my first tie rod adjuster. And this is just a generic tube. And I basically took my tie rod had to get it cut with a grinder, took some tube that actually fit pretty good, and then welded the threaded ends back onto it at the approximate length that I needed. Uh, that was a, a trail repair good enough to get me home for the day until I got replacements. After I went through that mess of having to do this, which ended up being like a six hour repair as I was driving around all over the place trying to figure out what to do because no parts store actually had tie rods, that's when I just decided to buy a bunch of them, never get stranded. Another couple things to think about when going off-roading, again specific to off-roading, is fluid. So make sure before you go out that you got a good oil level in your truck. Make sure that you got a good coolant level. Uh, it's common to overheat when you get into off-roading in extreme conditions where you're really pushing the engine power. A jug of water. Not so much for human consumption. I don't really go into too many remote places. Uh, but if the radiator starts to get hot, you can just dump it right on top of the radiator and kind of cool things off pretty quick. That comes in handy too. Funnel in case you need to top off your coolant, but if you do that before you go out, hopefully you don't need it on the trail. I do go ahead and bring my onboard air compressor type thing. It's uh, a generic kind of Amazon eBay special here. Chinese made uh, high flow air compressor hooks directly to the battery. It works pretty well. I've talked about it in previous videos. Specifically at Uari, El Dorado Outpost has high speed uh, high flow air compressors that you can use to air up. 
Sometimes if it's a crowded day though, you might be waiting a while for it to be your turn. One other tool that I keep just in case, duct tape. You never know when you might need it, but it comes in handy. So to store all these tools, I have a nice tote here. This is Husky brand from Home Depot. Locks nicely on the edges. Couple of additional things that I bring. Fire extinguisher, I got it mounted in the hatch area. Good to have, a lot of off-road clubs and parks will require one. And this is like a four foot shovel. I got it strapped to the back of my hatch, but that comes in handy especially when driving on the beach or if you need to get yourself unstuck from some mud or dirt. So I've got another tote here. This is a Plano brand tote, sportsman trunk as they call it, but jumper cables, good gear to have just in case. Recovery straps. You know, recovery straps are cheap and they help so much. Along with recovery straps, I'll mention Look on your vehicle and make sure you know how to attach the straps. Stock vehicles have a hook underneath kind of the front frame rail and you got to look for the long like strong looking hook. There's a little tab there that's kind of thin metal and it's got a little oval cutout into it. But that's not the recovery point, that's a tie down point if you're trailering it somewhere. But I can't tell you how many times I've been out with it like, you know, if it's one or two people and no one else has had straps and people get bogged down. So this is a short strap. This is actually a tree saver strap, so if you have to use a winch or something, you want to hook it up to a tree. This prevents damage to trees. But the other benefit of this is that if you end up having to tow someone that, say, has steering disabled or you're in more of a windy area of the forest, you want a short strap so you don't have this long strap when you're trying to get around turns. So short strap comes in handy. This is the longer strap. I don't know, it's like 20 feet long or something. This is really just a generic strap. I got it at Walmart for like 20 bucks. I've used it so many times and just the fact that I have this has bailed so many people out because like I said a lot of people just go off-roading and don't even really think about it or or know what you need to do to get out of situations like that so as long as someone's got a strap you can generally get people going in a lot of different areas where they're otherwise stuck. Bungee cords Eh, you never know when you need them. I've always had them just laying around. Snatch block. Honestly, I never had the pleasure of really needing to use this, but this is just the pulley that you can loop your winch wire through. This helps double the strength of your pool if you're having to winch yourself out. You use the snatch strap, the uh, tree saver strap, and then you use a shackle, hook this to a tree, and then you run your winch line through it and then back to yourself on your front bumper and that effectively doubles your winch line strength because you've got two strands of the wire pulling on you now. So good thing to have. So that's the overview of my tools, spare parts, and recovery gear that I typically take with me pretty much anywhere in the Xterra, but also especially when going off-road. So if I had to narrow it down to say my top recommendation in each category, tools, it's got to be a good socket set or open-end wrenches in the correct sizes. Generally up until 19 or 21 millimeters is going to be good. Most of the stuff on the Nissan is going to be metric anyway. But you want to be able to make sure that you can at least get throughout the steering system. So tie rod adjusters, tie rod ends, upper ball joints and things like that. As far as spare parts, this should really be all that you need to see. Tie rod adjusters, these thin slender rods are going to be what breaks first on a Nissan Xterra. So independent front suspension isn't that great for durability off-road. So go ahead and get yourself some heavy-duty tie rod adjusters or at least make sure you have spares. And for gear, seriously, a $20 snatch strap like that is going to get you out of most situations as long as you know how to get it attached to your vehicle. Last thing I'll leave you with is that, well, it's 2020. So, you know, hand sanitizer, face mask, and all that good stuff. So hope this helps. And if you're starting to compile your arsenal. Remember, you don't need everything all at once, but definitely start with the basics and then you can kind of slowly piece together your, your kit that you keep in your truck at all times. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content of these videos and enjoy your next adventure in your Nissan Xterra.